In unserer heutigen Ausgabe von Focal Point werden wir in die verschiedenen Kulturen eintauchen. Funny, eh? That was German, and today on our sixth episode of Focal Point, we are going to dive into the topic of culture. We will touch on the topics of memes, international cooking at CCP, and Congolese culture. Stay with us. Hello, I'm Andreas Copes. Y hola, soy María Dolores. Bienvenidos to Focal Point, the magazine show about the Community College of Philadelphia on CCP TV, the three-time Emmy-nominated educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. That was the Spanish Andreas. Bueno. <laughs> I don't know about you, Andreas, but every time I see memes on social media, they never fail to make me laugh. Yeah, I just saw this really funny one last night that I can't stop thinking about, and it's from Modern Family, where Gloria says, he scared the baby Jesus out of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Now let's see how meme culture is perceived at CCP. Like the definition of memes. Merriam-Webster defines a meme as an idea, behavior, style. Like, enough with the boring stuff. Just bring on the memes, man. All right, guys, this is Shaggy, no relation. Now, who might you be? Uh, I'm Eric. Aaron? Eric? Eric. Eric. All right, now, Eric, what's your favorite meme? Uh, my favorite meme is, I don't know, I don't know his name, but the... <laughs> it's the, a Kermit the Frog meme. Yeah, it's a Kermit meme. <laughs> it's actually a really good one. He asks him, he's like, hey, buddy, still fighting with the wife. <laughs> And Kermit, <laughs> who just happens to be a butcher. <laughs> uh, complete coincidence. All right, what's your name, man? Jasir. 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 Yes. Jasir. Jasir. What's your favorite meme? Uh, it's a it's a Tom meme. It says, <laughs> "Me drinks two yogurt samples from the samples tray." And it says, Woman working in a sperm donation clinic. And it's just Tom just looking at. It. <laughs> when you suddenly remember that you have a kid. <laughs> That's pretty freaking great. So this meme says, the face you make when guys at the gym <laughs> scream with every rap. <laughs> it's a pretty famous meme. In this meme, they say Alabama, Ancestry.com, is this Tinder? <laughs> It's pretty funny. A little, a little bit, but pretty funny. <laughs> oh, that's great. So we got a Scooby meme. Look here, gang. The book says to look at a person who needs to go to bed. <laughs> it's pretty funny. He just looks straight at you. What do you meme? How do you meme? What is a meme? To be continued. Okay, so this one is, uh, that's a Dan O'Neill. Shout out to Dan <laughs> O'Neill. Dresses up like uh, Russia, goes Dan CCP. O'Neill, CCP veteran. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you wear Crocs in defense or attack mode? <laughs> That's actually so freaking spicy. I do. It's from RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay, and it says, I love that show. <laughs> I can't wait to see how this turns out. And it looks like this. All right. It's a spicy meme ball right there. It's a spicy meme ball. Parents leave me and my sibling in the car. Me and my sibling. <laughs> Oh, my jaw's locked. All right, Scoobs, we had a lot of spicy memes today. But that's all for me. I gotta go beat the crap out of Goku. See you all next time. That was funny, Andreas. I didn't know that was your favorite meme. Yeah, I love it. I really like it. Um, and all this laughing from memes is shaking up my tummy and is making me a little bit hungry. <laughs> Andreas told me about it. I could really go for a good authentic meal right about now. Really cool. Well, I lived in Berlin, Germany, and it is very international there. So I'm familiar with a Middle Eastern breakfast and an Indian dinner. <laughs> 
let us have a look at the international cuisine here à la Collège. lunch today is really exciting because it's an opportunity for students to really kind of see what a restaurant would run like without having to be in a restaurant. Into details and the small things and that's what we really stress to the students, give them that opportunity to do that active hands-on learning. So we give the liberty to the student to come up with dishes but we do have themed luncheons. Today's theme is international theme so we're going to be having a buffet style luncheon also stations, so it's going to be live action stations, so the students are going to be preparing the food out in the dining room. Not typical because we usually do that in the kitchen, but what they do is they, they go out, prepare, customer comes up, prepares the food, and then pretty much serves it right there. Now. So we're going to start off with a fruit and cheese display, also a charcuterie and vegetable display. For past hors d'oeuvres, we're going to have tomato soup shooters, truffle deviled eggs, cucumbers with Wursan cheese, and for the stations, the live action stations, we're going to have a pho station, which is, you know, more of an Asian style. We're going to have a salmon and fruit station, which is a typical French dish, and we're going to have a pasta station, so a typical Italian station, and then round everything off, we'll have a dessert station. It is a flaming donut station. So I'm on the faux station, so I was prepping the broth. I made the cream and tomato soup for the shooters, for the hors d'oeuvres, and I was making the beef that goes in the faux, some noodles. I'm in charge of the pasta station, so we're doing penne noodles with sliced mushrooms, some cream sauce, tomato sauce, doctored. I just put some salt, onion powder, and garlic powder in it, and with some shrimp. I made a basic chimichurri sauce with, you know, red chili flakes and everything. That was basically Americanized compared to how it's supposed to be. Also made the chorizo sausages today. I prepped the churro donuts and I'm also currently working on the steaks that go inside the food. See, I'm, my husband's from Nigeria, so it kind of helped me learn some of the foods he's used to cooking at home and everything else because I didn't know any type of cuisine to be like, hey, hon, here we go. <laughs> so it helped me a lot. I don't know about you, Maria, but that reminds me of some of my favorite dishes from um, Germany, back from home. Here in America, I really miss some good old German bread. Of course, Andreas, and all I can think about is cascaritas and kui, which is guinea pig. Those are very famous plates in my country, Ecuador. Guinea pigs? <laughs> yeah, as you can see, there are many different cultures. So now let's take a look at this next segment about CCP students and her native culture and one of her authentic cooked meals. If I were to describe the Congolese culture in one sentence, I would say it is very unique and special, yet difficult. In Congo itself, we have over 700 dialects. It's very different. For example, every clothing has a meaning. Well, I'm not really sure about other countries, but about my country, Congo, every clothing has a meaning behind it. So maybe something that I'm wearing right now is something more casual. But then again, it depends on where you're going to. I had a video shoot in New York and Bronx, and I had a two-piece with a lot of jewelry, and I had shells in my head. And those shells describe royalty. I was sending a message of, I am from a, you know, a, a rich family. I am from a, a higher class. Africa has a lot of common food. It's like Ghana and Nigeria, they have jollo. And, and I just found out that actually like Kenya and uh, Mali also make jollo. So it's, it's, it's like we share the same food, but there is a specific meal that us Congolese people make. Congolese cassava. It's a very long process. It can take about maybe two hours to make. It's very healthy, it's greens. You mix it with any kind of meat you want to mix it with. We Congolese people usually use sardines, we put axtail, we put dry fish. 
You can put pepper, but my family, we don't eat pepper, so we don't put pepper on it. If a man were to marry a woman, well, the first step is, is to write a letter. He will write a letter with money in an envelope saying that he has good intentions for the daughter and he would like to meet and bring his people along. So when the father reads the letter, then he will say, okay, well, I'm available on this specific date. You can come and then we'll meet. Once they meet, he will have to bring in certain stuff, um, you know, like maybe a few drinks, uh, an envelope just as a symbol of saying, you know, thank you for allowing me to meet with you. We are really fun people, but um, don't invite Congolese people to your wedding because they will come to your wedding, they will spend thousands of dollars on shoes and clothes to make themselves look good and not give you any gift and they will eat all your food. Well, c'était un plaisir de vous avoir chez moi à la maison. Um, J'ai vraiment aimé l'interview. Thank you for having me. More than 100 dialects? Wow, in Latin America and in the Spanish cultures, countries as well, we all have many different dialects. So sometimes it's very hard to understand. For example, my friend from Honduras, when we met, it was very hard to understand each other. Really, I feel you, Maria, because um, <laughs> my grandmother was from Bavaria and some people in Germany would even argue that Bavaria is not a part of Germany because of the dialect they speak and they can't really understand those people. Reminds me a little bit about the Texas-US conflict. <laughs> really? Well, language can be so diverse, tear us apart but also bring us together. Well, that's what we'll have time for today. You have been watching Focal Point, the magazine show about the Community College of Philadelphia on CCP TV, the three-time Emmy-nominated educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. So, I'm Maria Dolores. And I'm Andreas Copes. We are both students here at the college, and this production of Focal Point is produced completely by students in the digital video production curriculum here at the college. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>